Hello everybody and welcome to a new series, Darkest Dungeon. As a lot of you will have seen from my update video, I talked about an idea by Christopher Odd for a Darkest Dungeon series where we would roleplay the characters, giving them backstories and names and sort of diary entries as we go week by week. And you guys seem to really like the idea and so I created a chat in my Discord where everyone can go and create their own character names and backstories. And a lot of you got involved. Um, me and a few other dedicated people have written quite a lot of backstories already in preparation for the series so if you do want to get involved with that process please join the discord or you can actually leave some of yours um in the comment section below that's also welcome but yes so we're going to be playing this game as i normally would but it's going to be very sort of role play heavy it doesn't mean that i'm going to be living the life of every single character with every move we make but it means that we're going to care for the characters we're going to make sure we try to keep them alive we're not going to be discarding anyone we're going to be keeping everyone we can and playing this as safely as we can and really trying to to master this game and make sure people don't die all while having a sense of ownership and sort of duty to keep these people alive because these are people that we have created their lives for we have created their backstory now i do also want to say this is a modded series so there are going to be quite a lot of mods installed as you can see I've got all of these mods. The vast majority are new classes, but there is some other things as well, some rebalances. But I'll get into those later into the series. If you do want to go and get involved and play this game yourself with mods, I will leave a link to a collection of all the mods I use in the description of this video so you guys can try that out for yourself. Uh, but yes, I really hope you guys enjoy this series. So let's get right into it. Here we start our journey with Renault and Dismas. Renault's backstory was written by Softroll in my Discord, so shout out to him for this backstory. Um, Renault, the leader of a thriving Holy Crusade, his companions and himself seek one thing and one thing only, to rid the world of unholy and god-forbidden creatures. The group was initially led by the grandfather of the esteemed Renault, Zartha Resilient. The group started out as uh, only a small group, only serving local villages and occasionally embarking on a local adventure. But as decades went on, it grew immensely, and they made a name for themselves across the land. Renault was passed the position of leader by the ones before him. The knight sought to be fitting for him to earn a title like his grandfather's, so they called him Renault of Ragnarok. Now the Holy Crusade walked the land in search of a true source of evil. Groups of 20 plus knights went, for, uh, knights went from town to town in every direction looking for their next challenge. Renault and his team caught word of a small estate where it was foretold the source of all, all that isn't holy began. They made their way down an old road towards the estate but weeks of travel meant they were ill prepared and low on supplies. To bandit raids, tormented creatures and disease, they were slowly picked off one by one. On one fateful night, a pack of rabid wolves emerged from the bushes. Hungry and half crazed, they darted towards the last few members of the group. As his two last men fell to their feet, Renault swung his sword for what he thought would be the last time. Bang! Bang, bang. Three shots from the darkness. Renault fell to his knees with his eyes tightly shut. He heard the wolves hit the ground and ominous footsteps of a man growing closer. Renault opened his eyes with a gun pointed at his head and the man said, Holy Crusade, I presume. You're just the man I'm looking for. Picked him up off his feet. The two exchanged names and headed for the cursed estate. What a beautiful backstory. I did some, some small bits myself to the end there to fit in with this next backstory of Dismas, but beautifully written. Right, let's get on to Dismas. This one was written by Unstable Stray from my Discord. Uh, Dismas the Highwayman. Oh, Dismas. Poor Dismas. Where had he gone so horribly wrong in life? He'd been of decent wealth growing up, but it hadn't have fulfilled him. He had a nagging, uh, he had a slight nagging always pulling at his mind. Just a bit more gold. They won't miss a few coins, it whispered. After his parents passed on, he had been driven to a life of gambling and drinking as a way to curb. How poor of an idea that had been. One night, one late autumn night, drunk and on a bad streak, Dismas did something that would tear his soul asunder. He found a small carriage on a cobble road. Thinking only of wealth, he shot twice into the carriage. If only he had never done that. Inside lay the corpses of a young mother and her child. Something dismatches immersion something that hit dismatches immersions like a punch. He staggered, weak from overwhelming sorrow. It it shouldn't have been this way. He never meant to kill. Afraid and alone, Dismas ran into the woods. From that day forward he lived a life of crime. Every night he saw the woman's face when he slept. And so Dismas thought about his sins 
He walked on an old road with a broken crusader in pursuit of redemption. A beautiful, beautiful backstory by Unstable Strafe. Thank you very much to both of you for writing that backstory. Now, the two will continue along the old road towards the dreaded estate. Our first combat, a brigand cutthroat. Let's try and stab him. Got a nice bleed on him there. Ooh, and a crit straight on Renault. That's not good, that's not good, but he has been smited. Now you may notice the gameplay is a lot quicker than normal um, from Darkest Dungeon. That's because I'm playing with faster dungeons, which basically just makes the game play a lot faster, which is really nice for helping with doing things quickly and just enjoying the game a bit more, both on my side and making it more enjoyable to view for you guys. So we'll take a look in this tent. Only 75 gold, not too much at all. We'll head through, see what we can find here. Another two brings, but they're surprised. Dismas getting a nice cut and some bleed on him. Lovely, lovely. We'll go for... Actually, let's go for a stun, maybe. Oh, no, that's only that's only a 50% chance. We're looking at the stats just below here, look, right there. Unfortunately, he's got a 50% stun, so... Renault, strike him. Seven, that's pretty good. Taking only one damage each, but we're taking a, a, do, um, a debuff to dodge. And another crit, that's 21 stress straight off the bat. Dismas is not feeling so good right now, but... We should be okay. We should be okay. A beautiful dodge there from the both of them. Really helping out here. And I think I think he's just about done to this bleed here. He's only got four. He's only got three hit points left. And that he's going to be doing four damage of bleed. So we'll take that time to shoot at this guy. And a beautiful crit from Dismas. My god. Wonderful. And let's even get a crit on this guy to finish him off. Sadly, no. No stress relief. We'll pick this up. And we'll return to the hamlet. So... We collect our winnings. We see... Ooh, plus five crit to melee skills. That's insanely good for an ult there. And Dismas, unfortunately, he's got reduced uh, speed above 75 light. That's not great. But extra crit to range skills. Both of these critting it up. That is actually brilliant for us to start here. So, we have made it to the estate. The two of them, Welcome with their shame in hand, so heads... Looking down at the floor, very, very upset with our actions and their past lives. They come here to rid evil and make up for their past mistakes. Let's take a look at each place. So, we have an arbalist, a thrall, and a bounty hunter. These guys will be who we will adventure into the dungeon with. Soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. Indeed. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. All will find their way to us. These are the three that we're taking on board. Shoot, bandage and pillage. The dancing steps of war. The dancing steps of war, indeed. So we're just going to quickly upgrade our stagecoach twice here. Well, I always do this. Ambition is stirring in distant cities. I'm trying to let the commentator say his lines, but he keeps saying, go on, stop. But yes, I've upgraded this twice because this means that next week when we do one adventure, we'll get five people in instead of three, which is really, really nice. Um, and something I do want to talk about briefly, so I did say that I have some mods that make the game a little easier or rebalance certain things. One of those is um, better stagecoach. The game normally has this stagecoach system where you have more people coming in, then you have your roster sizes, and then you have experienced recruits, which basically means people of higher levels can come in but it is slightly changed so this here stays the same the hero roster size is increased from the default which is nice we start with a bigger roster size and we can get up to a bigger roster size but the main change is with experienced recruits normally when you upgrade it to level one you'd have a chance at level ones coming in and then you'd have a chance at um i believe it's a chance at level twos but it's a really low chance and it goes like that but this actually improves the chances of level ones and twos and not only that when they come in they already have all of their skills bought this is just going to massively speed up the process of introducing new characters so i really hope that you guys are okay with that uh, and that's one of the main sort of rebalances. We do have another rebalance on this, the Nomad Wagon, that we'll speak of later. And the other um, slightly big change is some characters have had their um, healing abilities altered, so they now heal stress as well as health. This is just going to be 
sort of a quality of life thing. I feel like not with the amount of new characters we have involved in this game, we're going to have a lot of unbalanced groups where there's not enough healing or there's not enough stress healing so i thought it's better to buff some of the stress healing that's already in the game uh, just to help us out a little bit but yes this is our fateful crew the first three people to arrive and we'll go into the backstories of these three now first we have Aurora, the arbalist with her weapon named hawk's eye this backstory was written by wild seabass before her house was ramsacked and destroyed by an angry mob, Aurora's father left her with a parting gift. He said, please be safe and be my hawk's eye. As an eight-year-old Aurora fled for her life, she held her father's hawk eye and watched her house burn. Throughout her life, Aurora faced many racist threats. However, she built up her crossbowman skills and soon her skills became unprecedented. As she became the folk tale of Western Europe, on her way to find new targets, she met up with Ruby, the musketeer, and the two became the best of pals. They, they hunted many animals and humans, eldritch and natural, um, and unnatural. One day, Aurora heard the tale of the darkest dungeon in a local tavern, and she suggest suggested the duo go there together. Little did they know of the adventure that awaited. Beautiful backstory there for Aurora. Really sets the tone for her character. Really, really happy to have her with us. Next, we have Urku, the Threll. And this backstory is written by Toast from my Discord. A monster of a man who unwillingly partakes in arena-style battles. Driven to madness by his captors, of which earned an entertainment establishment to speak of, in which Urku was forced to kill others to be fed or given basic needs. One day, he managed to break free and runs as far away from the arena as he can and stumbles upon the dungeon. Fears fearlessly, Urku steps inside. Really great backstory for a man of this might. Like, look at this absolute beast. That's going to be a great backstory for him. Next up, we have Clint, the bounty hunter. This backstory was written by both me and Softroll in the first live stream I did of this. I did, like, a little test of live stream and he wrote this in there. Um, given a bounty from a town a ways down the road to come to the estate and execute the groundskeeper, a task many had been offered but no one had returned to claim the gold. He knew better than to accept such a task after hearing the horrors of the estate, but his stubborn nature wouldn't let him leave this bounty unclaimed. So there's the backstories for all of our, uh, all of our adventurers, all of our heroes. Let's hope they can make this work. Let's hope they can um, come together grow and learn about how each other's going to work and who's going to be the best going in there. Now we do have a little bit of a, of a tough time going in here because we only have one healer and that's our Arbalist. Now she is a pretty decent healer, that's actually early on okay, but normally unmodded you start with a Vestal and unfortunately we do not. So we have here Clint with his abilities, I don't know if you know much about the Bounty Hunter but he's good at like, marking targets and getting extra damage on those marked targets. He can also stun. As you can see here, he's got two different stuns. That's actually really, really nice that he's going to be very, very useful for uh, for keeping things off of us. Urku here, very, very good for bleeding. He's got his maim here, very up close and personal. And then he's actually not got any of his uh, healing abilities here. Normally he has this self-heal and self-stress um, stress negator, but instead he's got animate an animicity? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, but that's going to mark himself and increase his stress, but that's going to uh, set up a repost and do a bit of damage to every single enemy. So that's going to be kind of in interesting. Repost is really nice. Basically, it means when we get hit, the enemy gets hit as well. Um, and with him being marked, that means he can take a lot of damage. With him having 37 max HP, that can be really, really nice for us. Next up, he's got um, Savagery. Uh, where he can buff his melee skills, um, but unfortunately receives more stress. So this guy, from his from his brutal past of being tortured and forced to kill, he he receives a lot of stress. He's he's very very tormented. And next up we have Trample, which we're only going to be use be able to use from the back line, but that might actually be a really really good place to put him to start combat. So that's a really nice one there. We don't have any other movement skills on him, so yeah, probably best to start him at the back and start off combat with a Trample. That seems like that could be really 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 useful let's take a little look actually at his quirks so he actually gets extra stress healed in the brothel and he uh, gets an extra scouting chance in the curve this one i can i can understand why he's um why he's an nymphomaniac he uh he's been lonely real lonely 
<laughs> and then uh, he gets extra stress if low light, being kept in darkness all that time, will do that to a man. And he is af afraid of the beast. Some of his some of his bigger foes in the uh, in the arena were not human, so he he really does fear the beast. Let's actually check on our arbalist as well. We didn't see too much in there. Seeing in red, extra damage to bleeding uh, while bleeding, and extra crit while bleeding. I suppose this can fit slightly into her backstory. Not quite as much as Urku's there, but I guess part of her past. She was maybe born in blood. <laughs> she's calm. Unfortunately, on the first round, she's going to do a little bit less damage. And Annette, she's going to get less crit against blighted enemies. On to Clint. Clint is um, tenacious. He's very much very much determined. Like I said, he's a stubborn man. He uh, he wants what he wants. He knows he knows what he's gonna get, and he's he's gonna he's gonna try and defeat evil in this dungeon and get that bounty. Um, a random target chance, slightly inaccurate. That's not too bad though. Sometimes it's a swing and a miss, and unfortunately, he will eat anything to satiate his hunger. Maybe uh, maybe on the on the long and lonely road here, he uh, he ran out of food and was forced to to eat some unsavory things. So that's uh. That's unfortunately affected him for the long run. But that's our group. I think we've got a really, really nice group here. But either way, we're going to embark on our first our first adventure into the dungeon and see how this crew works together. Let's get right into embarking on an adventure. We've got our five guys, of course. Well, guys and gals. Of course, there is five of them. We can only bring four with us, so there's going to have to be a decision made. But I think we have a pretty good group. We'll move these two out for now. Um, I think, like I said, Urku is going to be a really good one to bring with us. This absolute brute. Uh, he's going to be really good in the front line for knockback, which is going to be nice. Which is going to be played very nicely into uh, our Arbalist Aurora. There's going to be a nice bit of synergy going on. But I think if we, if we start off with a trample... That's actually going to be probably the best thing to do. Um, even though it doesn't do much damage, uh, it does do a bit of knockback, which is nice. And I think it's just going to be a really nice way to start. It's not like this guy has a ton of speed, but I still think having him in the back line to start with and bringing him to the front line during combat is going to be the best way to go about this. And then we've got to think that who, whoever's there is going to get pushed back. So we want our Arbalist. We need Aurora. She has a heal. She is going to be very, very, very important to us. Um, her having Mark is going to synergize very nicely with Clint here. But um, having this bandage heal is going to be very, very important. So we'll keep her in that spot there. Um, and then whoever goes in these front two spots, we've got to realize that one of them's going to end up in slot three and the other one's going to end up in slot two. So I think we take Clint in spot one because he has pretty good synergy with everything. Um, of course, he can't use his flashbang in spot one, which is unfortunate, but he does have three abilities here that he can use in spot one. And I think, honestly, the knockback on this is going to be better than the flashbang on this. So I'm going to go with um, the uppercut here and put him in slot two. Uh, sorry, slot one. And then I think, honestly, it's going to be a better play to use Dismas here. I mean, he is a highwayman after all. Spot three is going to be where he resides most of the time and where he thrives, honestly. He's going to get pushed back there. While in slot two, he can still do a lot, though, because he can use open vein. And that's really nice because it means that early on in combat, we can still get stuff done with every character. This is the only guy, really, that's going to be not great in spot... Um, not great in spot the last spot if he stays there but as soon as we use trample that's gonna be really good so we'll try this out this may end up being a bit of an odd build but we'll go into our first one here now i just want to say a few things a few little rules that i've kind of set for this series uh, before we jump into our adventure uh for one in terms of discarding uh, heroes you can dismiss a hero that is something i am almost never going to do the only times i'll ever do that is for example if we um if we have two of the same hero if we have two say we have two um crusaders and we have one as a backup in case one dies and then another one and, and, and we still got a backup and we're still using our main one renault and then a new backup comes in that's a higher level we will replace that one uh but on another note 
most of the time we aren't going to have backup heroes. It's going to be a limit of one class most of all because we have so many custom classes and only 21 roster slots right now. Of course that will increase but I think even at max capacity we only just have enough for one of every new class. So we're going to try and limit it to one per class. We're not going to be dis dismissing people for stress or anything like that. Um, and I'd most likely will do one or two adventures per uh, per video, depending on how long it takes. I want to try and have my videos around 40 minutes long to an hour, considering that this is going to be a once a week series. Um, I'm hoping that this will be going out on Wednesday and every following Wednesday is, is the idea. Uh, so please do let me know what you think of that. This gives people time to write backstories and um, it just it just makes the, the series a little easier to manage for myself because it is going to be more heavily edited than our previous series that we've played on. But that's kind of the main sort of rule set that I just wanted to go over here. Mainly about the dismissing heroes and um, swapping heroes out, things like that. In terms of if we if we find... Say we've got Renault level 1 and the, a level 2... Crusader comes in, but we've only got one Crusader. I won't swap those out. I think it's better to stick with our named hero with all the traits that we've got for them and all that sort of stuff. And that's going to be better. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And on top of that, we're going to be having five new classes come in every week from the um, from the the wagon there. I think it's going to be better to limit the amount of heroes we're allowed to take from that so we can't just take all five and fill up our roster straight away to make sure we're av like averaging leveling up everyone we have to kind of pick and we can't just take everyone so i'm thinking maybe th in the earlier episodes we can take three but as we get further in we can only take two now it is obviously still a good idea to upgrade the ca uh, the cart because it means we've got more options and more choice but I am going to try and limit that because it's for one going to make the game a little harder for us, but it's also going to mean that we can keep getting backstories without being overwhelmed by a by a very large number of uh, of classes coming in all of a sudden. Either way, let's get into this, get some provisions. So this is only a short adventure, but we are in the ruins, so we're going to take enough food. Eight is almost always enough for a short. Then I'm going to take two shovels, one of everything, two skeleton keys and two holy waters and then we're gonna get eight torches i believe mm, should we go for eight should we go for 12. i'll go with eight i think eight should do and i think this is going to be a pretty good lineup we'll have to see how this goes i'm pretty happy with how everyone's coming together and the synergies between especially considering um clint and uh, our arbalist Aurora have such good synergy with marking. Both of them deal bonus damage to mark marked enemies, and both of them have the ability to mark an enemy. So I think that's going to be a really nice synergy between the two here. So, the group and their first adventure. Let's see how this goes. Already taking some stress from the hallways. We get our nice little torch here, though. We'll pop that on straight away. Right there. And head through the door here. Onto our first battle. Just two skeletons, burn rabbles. So, I'm thinking, if we have a look at the HP here, you've got HP of 8. If we select this, we can do between 5 and 10. So, it's actually, like, a decent chance to one-shot. So, I think that's what we do. We just take a one-shot, and there you go. We got him exactly 8 HP. Beautiful. And then, for our, um, for our shot here, actually, slight problem. Slight problem. Within slot 3, because we don't... Because... Actually, why can't we use suppressing fire? Oh, we can only hit the back two with that. We can actually hit the front, which is a little bit of a problem. Doesn't mean we can't heal, though. Of course, healing isn't necessary right now because everyone's full HP. But the good thing is we could get a critical heal for some stress relief. So we will try that out. And it does give him a healing buff as well. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do a cut on him. Of course, their bleed resist is 200%. We're never going to bleed them. But there's actually a decent chance that we one-shot this guy. And we got the full hit. So we, we one-shotted him. Getting a little bit of stress healing there. A little bit of extra gold as well. We'll unlock this strong box. Getting us another shovel, which is nice. And some busts, which are of course going to be very, very nice for upgrading. You guys are going to have to help me in choosing what we upgrade uh, first and what things we upgrade. Especially when I have leftover things at the end of an episode. Of course, when I'm in the middle of an episode, I'll probably just buy what I think is best. But I'd like to get some feedback from you guys. But here's our first hallway battle. We have a little bit of a difficult situation here because we... We can only hit these front two. Now, this this will not one shot this guy. It could one shot that guy if we get if we get a good one there. But I'm I'm kind of more tempted 
to go for her here and try and get... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the stress dealer and try and get her taken care of quickly. Ooh, I didn't even realize. Dismas here has extra damage versus marked as well. So we've really got an incredible build against marked targets. And a big crit there from Dismas. Oh my god, you beautiful, beautiful man. And a lovely dodge from Aurora. Oh my god, this is going splendid. This is going splendid. We'll get another arrow in him. And here we'll see the power of Trample. We'll see if it actually does much damage. And there you go, seven damage on that guy. Seven damage. That's really, really nice. And we should just be able to finish this guy off. <sighs> Unfortunately, Clint with a miss there. But do not worry. Follow up the shot with Dismas. He knows what he's doing. He's been on the road a long time. But let's see. What damage does this guy have? He's got 5 to 10. He's got 7 to 14. That's pretty nice. We'll make sure to reset him to the back. He is, of course, the slowest in our group. We've got speed of 3. He's got a speed of 5, and he has a speed of 5. So he has a speed of 0. So unfortunately, he's almost always going to be going last. But but when he hits, he hits like a truck. I mean, all that fighting sure did do him good in the uh, in the old combat department, especially when he's up close and personal. Right, we'll make sure to light the way, keep our light going. We're not going to be doing many zero light runs in this uh, in this save file because it's just dangerous and we don't want to be throwing anyone away. Of course, that is a tactic you can do in normal runs. In normal save files, you can play zero light runs with throwaway characters, but we don't really have throwaway characters, so... Okay, so nice here. We've got um, some stress relief back there. Unfortunately, a pretty heavy hit on Dismas there straight off the bat. Um, now, we could go for a suppressing fire on the back guy. Let's see how much damage will we do here. So we'll do 4 to 7, 9% to hit. Um, I'm unsure. I don't think it's worth marking because he's not a high priority target. Unfortunately, we only did 5 damage there. Now, we could... We can't quite kill him there. Unfortunately, Dismas got that miss. That's unfortunate. That, that is really unfortunate. Let's see. Can either of these be killed in one hit? Unfortunately, neither can. Um, unfortunately, neither can. How much stun protection do they have? Only 25. Let's risk a stun. There we go. Push him to the back. Makes this guy easier to hit. Means he'll skip his turn. Unfortunately, we did take a bit of damage there. But we can now rampage into the three of them. Rearranges them, but he's been stunned, so that makes that a little easier. And we can go for the back line there. Another big crit from Dismas. He is getting some crazy crits. That is actually because... Ooh, bad crit on there. But that is actually because of um, Eagle Eye here. Plus five crits of range skill. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing to have for us here. So I'm actually pretty tempted. I was going to go for that back line guy, but I want to go for this guy. We need to get off some healing. We're all a little low here. Of course, three healing isn't crazy. Um, but... I think it needs to be done. The, the fact that we can... Ah, oh, this is just a beautiful build together. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take him out. But we can get ourselves a little bit of stress healing here. A little bit of stress healing here. And some actual healing as well. That is very, very nice. These guys, these two at the back, are a little worse for wear. But they should be fine. We should be able to get through it with them. Let's keep torched up. Oh, unfortunately, a trap there. But he got the dodge. He got the dodge. Very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. See if we've got any combat here. We'll make our way back to this room and just check it out, see if there's anything going on. Another dodge trap. That's beautiful. Well, well done, Clint. Well done. Doing great there. Ooh, we need to reorder. I keep forgetting that. Reorder. Always make sure we reorder. It's The good thing is it's not actually a bad thing if we don't reorder, but having him be able to hit the first front three is really valuable. So we've got another stress dealer in the back here. We actually got the surprise, meaning we're going to get to go first here, which is beautiful. So we'll just take the initiative and just try and get a big hit on him. Unfortunately, we low rolled it at a nine. Uh, I'm going to mark you. I think it's going to be good for everyone to get you marked, and we'll go for a shot on you. Still, still got a little bit of health left, but the trample should kill her. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Right, we resisted the bleed as well. Really, really nice there, Clint. And another great dodge from Dismas. Oh my god, this is going well. And now, because we have this mark on this guy here, um, this mark plus the minus 10 protection, we can actually go for a 90% plus damage hit on this guy. Sadly, Clint missed there. Ooh, another good dodge from Dismas there. Oh my god, he's doing well on that front. And we're actually going to go for a little bit of healing here. Get a heal on Dismas there. And let's go for a shot on you. Kill the back line there. Another bit of stress healing. For our guy and resist the bleed. Oh, unfortunately, a little bit of stress and he did take the bleed damage. But what we can do with that is we can actually bandage up a little bit there and maim that fool. 12 damage right in the kisser. His fists made of pure steel. 
We'll get a key to open this chest up and get some heirlooms. A little bit more holy water. And some gold. Lovely. Right, let's make our way across. Everyone's got a little bit of damage taken, but I don't think anyone's doing particularly bad. Everyone's stress is pretty nice. I mean, we've got 29 over here, which would be nice if we could reduce that somehow, but... I doubt we're going to find another one of those shrines again. Eight food, though. That means we can start eating a bit of food and, and heal people up. I do wish everyone got a bit of stress relief or, like, per person got a bit of stress relief when you, like, reached max health again. That'd be really nice. It's not entirely necessary, though. But here we go. Got a, a, health, um, a food check here. We shouldn't get another food check, so we should be absolutely fine. I did eat one too many food. So that's a bit annoying, but we'll continue our adventure and make sure we go into this treasure room. Considering we do have another key available and we have shovels ready to ready to go here. So we'll rubble that down. We'll reorder our party. By the way, I will forget to reorder my party sometimes. It's just something that I do. We'll make sure our light's at 100 to try and get that surprise. Um, and unfortunately not, we are going to take some stress here on... Aurora there as well. That's kind of the worst person to get stress dealt. I'm going to just mark you straight away. Um, let's go for a shot on you. Crit for 13, Dismas. You absolute beast. He is doing fantastically right now. Absolutely fantastically. So we can hit for 3 to 6 on this guy or 4 to 7 on this guy. Let's go for the back line. We've got a 6. That's not too bad. And Clint's taking a little bit of damage there, but that shouldn't matter all too much. And another big dodge there. From Urku. Nice one. Ooh, that's not good. That rear range there is not good. We'll trample. Get a bit of extra damage going on. This guy has been rearranged. That rearrange is actually really, really important. Take that guy out. I don't think um I don't think Clint's gonna be able to reach from here now, you know. I think he's Oh, some big dodges there. I think that's put him in quite an uncomfortable spot. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna snuff our light out. That's gonna pit, put us in pitch black. And I'm going to do that because now we kill this guy and we're going to get a little bit more out of this. As you can see, we've got quite a lot there. Um, we want to be getting rid of these. So we can take a look at this journal entry. Um, I found the hag. I overestimated its intelligence. It's made itself easy to find based on its arrogant nature and abhorrent flaunting. I've announced its debrancheries? De de debrancheries? I do not know how to pronounce that. Um, I don't know. Um, to the entirety of the city populace. And the hunt will begin soon. Okay. We can get rid of that now. Um, and we have ended our adventure here, so we can get rid of both of those. And we can open this with a key as well. Another bunch of heirlooms there. Beautiful, beautiful. So, unfortunately, our arbalist Aurora has come out of this relatively stressed. She's, she's, not, she's not doing great. But, for the most part, everyone came out of that relatively unscathed. I think that's probably going to be quite a big morale booster for everyone quite a big get and let's have a look what we got here so forceful that's really good for clint because he's got some skills that when we unlock them later on that are gonna be really nice for moving people around that's not too big of a problem for aurora there and plus 10 percent stress on urku is pretty pretty bad to be honest we probably want to get rid of that but again filthy makes a lot of sense for urku so we've got ourselves a harlot We've got ourselves a harlot already. Okay, we'll bring a harlot in here. Bring our harlot in. And remember, I only said three, so we're only allowed to take two of these. So, we have we have some interesting ones here. We have a Plague Doctor. Of course, one of the default classes. We have a Butcher. Beautiful. Um, we have ourselves a Revenant. Revenant's all to do with self-sacrifice, bleed, all that sort of stuff. Blight. He's, a, he's pretty awesome, actually. Um, that right there is kind of interesting. You self-blight yourself, but you can siphon blood when below 33% uh, HP. But yeah, he, he benefits, if I remember correctly, from being on death's door. Is that this character? It might be. No, maybe not, maybe not. This guy's just a very very heavy bleeder. Um, I think I think he could be really, really useful. Um, it could be really nice if we get vam vampiric, vampiric, vampiric even Embrace Unlocked over here but let's have a little look so he's got stress eater he's got healer's gift we'll take him on board i think i think he's gonna be very useful we've also got a falconeer um in terms of falconeer we have uh we have some pretty good skills so we've got some back range stuff that we can do with her um that's quite nice as well she's actually got a really interesting tactic where she can 
use this skill here, adapt to change one skill to another effect. So skill one effect will buff her speed, skill two effect will debuff dodge and speed. Um, this one will skill one will mark, skill two will bleed. Um, and then, whoopsie. And then you can combo those together so you can get extra bleed amount versus damaged. So that, that'd be really nice. Then with this one, we've got um, de-stealth all heroes and clear stun and give crit and reduce stress. Only slightly though. Um, skill 2, buff last until stealth ends. You can, you can stealth and increase crit while stealth. So that's very interesting. She could be she could definitely be one that we, uh, we take on board. And we've also got the Slayer here. This is actually a Doom-based character. Very interesting indeed. Very interesting indeed. Let's have a little look what he's got. Bound for Glory. Tag and Bag. Mar that's more marking. That's really nice. Um, Spike Sabbath. Um, Going to be able to knock back and stun. Um, you can increase Bound for Glory's... Um, crit chance which is nice so that that is one that moves him back to though that's the only thing um and we've got run and gun here so this guy's he's interesting but he's got a lot of movement skills which are not particularly my cup of tea uh so i think hmm plague doctor doesn't have his healing unlocked so i think it's probably gonna be best here that we take the falcon here and we stick with those two as i said we are going to be leaving some people behind I know that it's probably best early on to just take as many people as you can, but I, I, I'm more so inclined to keep our numbers lower and just try with that uh, and see if we can go from there. Either way, I'll, uh, I'll see what we can upgrade. We can increase our roster size, but we probably don't need to do that yet. Um, and we've also got our um, Abbey unlocked, um, which... We might actually want to put our Arbalist into right now. Um, we can go to the bar as well. So, the, with the Arbalist, do we have anything? Ooh, unfortunately, Calm. Calm got locked in, so... Sadly, she, has, she is always going to have reduced damage on that first go, which is a real shame for Aurora there. It's not what you want to see, but it's what we're going to have to deal with. But I think... I really want to put her in for a heal, for a stress heal, but she is our only healer, still. We don't really have much other healing at all here. Now, let's have a little look at our harlot, shall we? So, we've got hands off, um, we've got a bit of knockback, bleed, um, move chance, repost. We've got heart of gold, which is going to debuff target. Um, it seems like it's going to only affect teammates, this one. So, you'd be reducing the ta your teammates' damage and dodge. You'd be reducing the amount of healing, and healing received, and stress healing, but it inspires one extra turn, two round cooldown. That's that's interesting. So if those debuffs only last for um, for one wave, basically, it means that you can force someone to get one and a half turns. Like they get one turn at full damage, and then another turn at half damage. But they're likely to get hit that next turn. That's that's kind of interesting. It seems kind of difficult to use. And we've got hold me close. We mark the target. We clear their stun. We force them to guard us. We um, decrease their stress. But it also reduces their buff. It reduces their crits received. And increases their crit chance though. So for a tanky person. That could be really really nice. And then we've also got on the prowl. Plus 69 AAA damage versus marked. This is going to pull us forward though. And we don't have anything to pull us back here. So I assume she'll have one skill. There it is. Look. That moves her back. Normally I like to have both skills unlocked. So we probably won't use this one too much. But this will activate stealth and um, buffers with extra healing received and dodge. So I suppose that could be useful later on. Um, in Into the fights when you're getting a little low HP and you really really need that extra healing. But to start with, I don't think that's going to be too useful. We get minus five dodge after the first round. That's terrible. Extra damage, extra crit chance while guarded. It works really well with hold me close. Um, increases the chance of winning gold in treatment ward. Um, a st stipend is paid for your part-time help at the medical ward facilities. Okay. That's... That's a strange one. That's a... Uh, 
I think what that means is if we treat a quirk, which we can't do yet, but later on we can actually treat a quirk and get rid of this, there is a chance that we get gold back for treating quirks, which is certainly interesting. Right, that's going to be it for the first episode, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I really hope you like the idea and everyone's going to get involved with writing backstories and coming up with character names. If you do have any, please join the Discord and I'll add you to the group where you can leave them there. Or if you don't use Discord, you can always leave it in the comment section below. I'm really hoping that a few people get involved and it really sort of just adds a new sense of you guys being able to get involved with the series. Again, I do want to just to give a little bit of a shout out to the YouTuber Christopher Odd, who is the person I originally got this idea from. He is the first person I've seen do this uh, in Darkest Dungeon, and I just really like the idea and want to do my own spin on it. So a shout out to him. I mean, he's a huge YouTuber. I think he's got like 600,000 subscribers, but even still, I do want to credit him where credit's due. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like this idea. I hope you really enjoy getting involved with this and sort of having the whole level of knowing and, and sort of friendship with the characters we create and really wanting to preserve them and keep them alive. I think having backstories for them is going to be a big part of this. And as we follow through the weeks we are going to be having diary entries from various different people basically we're going to be um talking about their pro how they progress and how they feel throughout this uh throughout this campaign this adventure either way i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode um the next one will be coming in around a week or so and i will see you guys in the next one